Hey guys, welcome to Living Waters. It's so great to be with you guys this Sunday. I am so stoked for church. Last week's message was amazing and super epic. If you missed it, get back and watch it. Make sure to share this broadcast. It is going to be an amazing day for you and you don't want to miss today. I love when we get together with you guys, really missing you guys, but church, this is an amazing community that we have and it's super encouraging. Make sure to comment, let us know you're here. God's got something awesome for you. fly there's no hiding from your grace I can't deny your heart for mine in a sun relenting chase and I was on the edge of deception caught up in my own hesitation until you love to go Trust the power of your word 
Enough to seek your kingdom first Beyond the barren place Beyond the ocean waves When I walk through the waters I won't be overcome When I go through the rivers I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I am not afraid to make There isn't one that is delayed So I will not lose heart Here I will lift my arms And start to sing to the night My praise will call the sun to rise Declare the battle won Declare that it is done Declaring victory, my God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Before me, behind me, always beside me, no shadow, no valley, where you won't find me, and I am not afraid. Declaring victory, my God will make a way, so I am not afraid. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Yes, God will make a way, and I am not afraid. Yeah. Not afraid. Turn it for good. You turn. 
If you can't feel that, I don't know, but God's presence is super powerful. And I know right now in these times, the best place to be is in God's presence. And who you're hanging around with really matters because when you're in the presence of people, you're actually in this vibe. And God gives this vibe of just absolute amazing peace and hope. And that's who God is. And being in his presence, it just lifts you up. It lifts you up out of your circumstances. And God tells us, you know, to make sure that we're hanging around with people that encourage us in our faith. And we want to make sure to be those people that are strong in our faith today, especially with the message that we have of hope and life through Him and our lives being changed. And as we go into offering today, that's what it's all about. And I know the Word of God tells us, and I love this scripture because the Word keeps you strong. And worshiping God and being in the presence of people that are strong is like the most epic thing because it's going to just build you up. And that's what God does. He builds you up when you're in His presence and being at church and being with the people of God and being, you know, just together in this community is like epic. And I love that because God reminds me of that all the time is to make sure that I'm surrounding myself with good people. And you know, I love people and I love family and I love community. And when you surround yourself with great people and people that encourage you, it is such an amazing thing because you feel like you want to move forward in your purpose and you'll never give up. And I love that. Never give up. God tells us to never give up. And so as we go into offering today, just remember God is, is speaking to you. He's calling you to himself and it's an amazing thing to know. And I love the word of God and especially this scripture. It's just super encouraging. And God tells us in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary of doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. And he means you will benefit from that. And God is saying, don't be weary of doing good. Don't be weary of giving. Don't be weary of being generous. Don't be weary in your faith. And so today as we give, we want to give because God asks us to give. And I just love that. I love to be generous and that opens heaven over our lives. It opens the blessing of God over our lives. And that's what we want as a church. So we can move forward and meet the needs in this city. And I love 
this generation, and I love what God is doing through us as a church. So Father, we just bring our offering to you today, God. We just want to give to you, God, to see the needs met in our city. Father God, to honor you with our lives. And Father God, to see what you're going to do as your kingdom comes on earth through your church in the city, province, and the nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes it's moments of brokenness which create the greatest transformations. Times where fear gives birth to faith, pain leads to healing, and chaos dissolves into peace. It's in these times we often see God more clearly. For in our deepest turmoil, He remains faithful. When our spirit is crushed, he remains strong. When our moment is too heavy, He carries the burden. As gold is refined by fire, we too are often refined by struggle. It's part of growing, changing, becoming. Lately, the journey has been difficult. Our breath has been labored. Our steps uneasy. But we stand in faith, knowing who is leading us through this desert. The God of peace, the God of hope, the God of restoration. Praise God, I love the power of worship. I love the presence of Jesus, amen, and I pray that you experience that presence right where you are, wherever you are, that the Holy Spirit just be with you, that you receive, that not only does your ear hear, but your heart would receive what you have in store from our loving God today. There's no question that, you know, as we've been looking at the blessed life, and I praise God for the number of testimonies I'm getting of people that are just feeling a new freedom, a new sense of power in their lives as they're breaking through and making decisions and, and breaking through financially. I've got good reports of uh, financial blessing, and, you know, it's the power of God. Well, we make the decision, amen, to really get close to Father God to really follow Jesus and to really be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is showing us and, and teaching us. And the more we get close to our Father, the more we realize how the world is so desperate for truth, how the world is reeling and what the Lord spoke to us about as the perilous times that we are in in this hour. And so there's no question that there is a anti-God move in the world today to abolish completely, you know, the name of Jesus especially. And as you get closer to the Lord, you realize this, the more you use Jesus and exalt him and lift him up. And we looked at that last week, didn't we, about just lifting up Jesus. And we don't want to ever, ever diminish the name of Jesus as Christians. But the Lord also says we'll be, we'll be persecuted. And we, we are seeing in this hour, you can't even pray publicly the name of Jesus. Any public gatherings, any interdenominational gatherings, you know, you really can't pray in the name of Jesus. You gotta use God, which it, once again, you know, is all embracing it seems. But when you lift up the name of Jesus, you're gonna be persecuted. And the Lord says it's persecution because of Jesus that lives in you. And the closer we get to God and the more empowered we are, the more on fire we are to see changes in the world today, the more we realize of the social injustices that are going on in this hour. We just want to be people who spread the good news. Amen. And what is the good news? Jesus Christ is the risen Savior of the world and Lord of our lives. And we want to shout that, as I said last week, from the mountaintops. We want everyone to know that Jesus is truly the Messiah. Jesus is the one that came to take away the sin of the world. For God so loved the whole world, folks. Seven and a half billion people on planet Earth. God loves every one of them. And we are too. Love because God loves. 
Jesus went to the cross for everyone, just as he went to the cross for you and I. And, and as we are, live in this hour, we have a tremendous opportunity <laughs> to share what God has done in our lives through salvation and through Jesus Christ. And, and so we're going to look today about, you know, how in the early church, and things seem to come right around, don't they? I mean, the early church, right, you know, we're in Pentecost, and, you know, and the believers then were, were just being scattered. Rome was in an uproar, <laughs> amen, and they were out after these Christian people that were stirring the people to believe in the risen Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so they were, they were scattered, <laughs> you know, all over the land, but folks, I'm here to tell you, they weren't shattered, amen? And so Ephesians 5, Eight. It says that God created us to be a public expression of his life that lives within us, where it reads, for you were once in darkness, but now you are in light, light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And so there we are. You know, we're, the, the closer we get to Father God, the more empowered we become, the more we want to be that light to the world, amen, that the world might know. Hallelujah. And so it wasn't long after Pentecost that the Christians were being totally uh, persecuted. But they were radical because they'd been received the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus was their risen Messiah. And they were s sent all over to share that good news. And so, as I say, they were scattered, but they weren't shattered. And everywhere they went, folks, you know, they were these radical, I call them the radical, born-again, spirit-filled, fire-filled, tongue-talking, devil-chasing, demon-stopping, fearless saints of God. Hallelujah. Are you one of those today? Because if you are, you're a radical. And this is time to be radical. This is the hour that God spoke about, that he needs his people to be radical for him. Because when we're radical for him, we live for him. We speak of him. We go into the highways and the byways to, to share that good news. Acts 7, 59, and they stoned Stephen. This was part of what was going on then. Because of Jesus, they began stoning. There was a Saul of Tarsus, uh, the Bible talks about, that later to be known as the Apostle Paul, you know, who was on a rampage, you know, murdering, slaughtering Christians and uh, giving consent uh, through Rome to have Christians, you know, terrorized, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and killed because of Jesus. But Acts 7.59, where it says they stoned Stephen. And Paul was giving, or Saul was giving permission for, for the stoning of Stephen. And as they were stoning Stephen, he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And so I'm one of those guys that believe that the spirit of Stephen had already gone, that they were just stoning, you know, a body that was, a spirit was gone. And, and Acts 8, 1, now Saul was consenting to his death, it says. And at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Did that stop them from witnessing? As they said, no, they went. Because of the grace and truth of the risen Christ that lived within them, Acts 4.33, and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew they could die. They knew they could be slaughtered just by using the name of Jesus as a risen Messiah. And great grace, however, was upon them. And that's the thing we've got to realize. We'll never be shamed by the gospel, that as we go forth and we talk about Jesus and we share Jesus with others and what he's done in our life, uh, we are under the grace of God and the power of God. He will give us the wisdom and how we share and how we are to be those witnesses so that we can continue in our journey so that our life here on planet Earth will be filled with opportunity and to share Jesus with others. And I, I find that the most exciting life you could ever live. It's been my life for 50 years, and I can't tell you there's no greater joy than having opportunity to sit down and talk to people about Jesus.
as Savior and all the things that salvation brings and has brought into my life personally. I've lived the blessed life for all of those years. I've never asked God why in any time because I know God only has good for me and that's, that's the power that I walk in. That's the grace that I know of God. That's the love of God that I know in my life. And the more I have opportunity, the greater the life is the greater the joy, the greater the peace. And uh, to have, you know, to be a pastor of a church and encourage congregation, you know, to be those people, to rise above themselves, to, to get into that relationship, that deep, intimate relationship, so that they too will have the power of the Holy Spirit leading them to those people uh, that they will share Jesus with, amen? And so, awesome opportunity. Didn't stop them at all from, you know, this persecution, I'll tell you. Acts 4.33, and with great power, the apostles gave witnesses to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Acts 8.4, therefore those who were scattered went everywhere proclaiming the word, hallelujah, the good word, the good news that Jesus has risen. He is the Messiah. And so persecution uh, could not destroy, couldn't, couldn't keep them down, <laughs> couldn't destroy their hope wouldn't destroy their belief, hallelujah, no way. They were driven by the truth that Jesus Christ is Savior of the world. The tomb was empty, hallelujah. Jesus had risen and nothing could stop them. They were consumed by a fire that burned within their hearts. Great grace was upon them. And they didn't go underground or head for the hills. They would rather die than keep the good news from going forth. Wow, there's a testimony. This is what happens when you're on fire. You know, you, you just die to self and you give your all in all, but knowing through the wisdom and the direction of the Holy Spirit that you'll be safe. God watches over. God empowers us. And God gives us the direction in which we should go and where we should go and how we should go. And we saw from the life of Jabez, uh, you know, as we studied, you know, his prayer was, God, don't send me anywhere that I will bring trouble. In other words, God, I don't want to go anywhere that your Holy Spirit is not leading me. Because if I'm not led by the Spirit, I can create a lot of trouble. I can create a lot of problems, and I won't be safe in those environments. So, God, I just want to stay on your path as led by the Holy Spirit. And so, Acts eleven nineteen. now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. So they weren't just scattered, or, you know, across town. They went out into the highways, um, hundreds of miles, and they walked in most cases. They didn't have, you know, automobiles, airplanes, planes, and trains, and et cetera, et cetera, you know, horsepower. Uh, they had sandal power, <laughs> and in some cases donkey power, or they had camel power, man, <laughs> and they would just go. They couldn't wait to get to their next destiny. Hallelujah. They, they wow. You know, there's nothing like a good dose, folks, of persecution, amen, to fan the flame of the fire of God. But it had to be more, folks, than persecution that kept the fire burning within uh, these saints as they preached with power and conviction, healing the sick and raising the dead. They truly believed without question that this was their call. They weren't just speaking words. They believed that what they were speaking was the actual word of God, the truth of God, and the word would go forth and it would do what it was sent out to do. Hallelujah. And so they were conveying the truth of God's word. They believed deeply. They knew their destiny. They, they died to fulfill their destiny, folks. And they were driven by his will. And what's his will? That we should die to self so that we can be alive in Christ, amen? And to, to live, live, live as Christ lives within us. They lived the great declaration that the Apostle Paul, who was Saul, who was converted and who would make some 15 years later, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me, Galatians 2.20. And I would ask you this afternoon, is that your de declaration 
Do you begin to feel empowered that it's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives within you? Contemplate on that. And God bless you right now. And I'll be right back. Death could not hold you. The veil torn before you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no evil, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name. What a powerful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus And you have no rival You have no equal Now and forever God you reign Yours is the King Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Praise God. You might be watching and saying, well, Pastor, that's way too radical for me. I'm just not that kind of person. <laughs> I'm not one to go out, you know, into the highways and the byways. I, I just, just not me. And I can only tell you that becoming radical is a decision. It's a choice we make because you'll never find a more radical model than Jesus Christ and his disciples as they went scattered sharing the good news of the ribbon, risen Christ. And for me, it's been an increase and an increase and an increase because I made the decision that I want to be that person. I want to be a vessel. I want to go and tell the world how God saved my life, changed my life, and I just want to live for him. And that's a decision both Claudia and my wife, who's now with the Lord, praise God, and we made that decision that we wanted to be vessels that were used to make a difference in the world. And as we grew in that through daily devotions and constant prayer and praising God and thanking Jesus for all he's done in our lives and thanking our Father for the way he loves us so much and Holy Spirit leading and guiding us into all truth. And so you might be there and saying, okay, you know, I want to do that, but I, I just, I'm not that kind of person. And God would say, yes, you're that kind of person. It's just a matter of making a decision. It's a matter of just saying, okay, God, yeah, I've, I've kind of been silent maybe for too long. Or maybe you do have a silent witness. Maybe you are the person. You can be radical and be silent, by the way. Radical doesn't mean you go, you know, jumping all over the place and shouting, you know, from the rooftops, although that's what I wanted to do, <laughs> hallelujah, and uh, I did in many occasions. But radical is just being ready as we looked at, being ready to give witness, to listen to people that we meet, and to hear their story. And the first thing you know, they'll begin to share with you because, you know, Christ speaks through you. Even when you're not talking, there is the power. 
that lives within you. It's called the rhema word of God that proceeds from you. Even when you're not speaking, and I know that sounds pretty radical, but when you start believing that stuff, you'll start realizing, wow, people have so much to share with me. And that is God, you know, bringing people to you because you've got something to share. It's not telling them, oh, you just need Jesus. It's listening to them because so many people that you come across and so many people I've come across in life, God had already saved, they were, uh, saved them. They just didn't know it until they began speaking and sharing things with me. And it was no doubt, no question in my mind, God had saved them out in the highways and the byways. And as we are called to go make disciples, you can't make disciples if there's no disciples out there. And so God is saving all the time. And if we have that listening ear, uh, then we can bring the testimony that will bring the people to the realization, hey, God, God has saved me. I know I'm changed. I know I'm different, and that's why. And so I want to pray with you uh, that you become that radical person, a radical person. You're not ashamed of the gospel. You're not afraid to talk about Jesus. You know, you're not afraid to pray in public. You're not afraid to pray for other people out loud. And that's all through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So if you'd like to pray that prayer with me, I pray, Father God, for everyone watching right now, Lord God, that wants that witness, wants to be that person, wants to be that radical person that has no fear, that is under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that we can share with others, we can listen to others, we can hear, Lord God, and we can speak as you give us utterance, O oh God, that people would know that, hey, you may seem like a real quiet guy, a real unassuming person, but boy, you've got power in you. You've got something in you, and I really want it, and that's the opportunity right there and then for God to save them and using you as that vessel. I pray that in Jesus' precious name, and if you've prayed that, you watch out. You're going to start feeling radical and empowered by the Holy Spirit and just wanting to meet new people so that they too would know Jesus. God bless you. God loves you. So do we. I'll see you next week. God bless. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I love that scripture. And let that be your scripture this week as you go into your week and uh, just let God strengthen you. And to be in His presence is is everything like come on it, it is powerful to be in God's presence and to be at church so make sure to follow us make sure to be with us every Sunday to get encouraged in your faith follow us on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube also but I want to leave you with this incredible scripture to encourage you guys to never give up don't give up be strong stay stable surround yourself with good voices and people that are strong in their faith to encourage you to move forward in the purpose that God has for you. And so this scripture is super powerful and I absolutely love it. And James 1.12 says this, and it's so great. And it says, blessed is the person who stands steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Stay the course, everybody. See you next Sunday. Have a great week.